Hey there friends, how's it going? David Potts with Song Notes here, and today I'm gonna to show you the Fast Car Intro Riff, and I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. And I'm gonna start with something super beginner friendly, right? Even if you only wanna play these four chords, you could play this song, technically, right? Uh, you got a fast car, E minor is a chord that I'm playing, da 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 you could have tons of fun with the song like that, but then I'm going to show you how you can like add these layers of complexity heading toward that full Tracy Chapman version, right? One cool example is you could go from this C to the G and then do this E minor to this D. It lets you capture the same melody, right? And then I'll show you finally that full version as well. So no matter your skill level, I've got you covered. Let's jump on in. I got a print-friendly guide and some audio file uh, samples of each of these different uh, sequences I'm doing over on my website. But let's get on into it and uh, look at the Fast Car intro riff. I can't wait to show you this one. Let's go. All right, y'all. So I want to start this one looking at the four chords that this whole riff is based on. We can get to all the details later, but these four chords are the foundation of everything, right? We have our C, our G, our E minor, and our D. Now, if you need help with these chords, I have a beginner chord guide on my website. These are, you know, the, the most uh, common voicings of these very common chords. But I, my point in showing you this is, see on the left there, right? You've got a fast car. I want a ticket to anywhere. You can play the entire song just by doing, you know, a single strum of each of these chords. You don't need to do any of the fancy finger style stuff. If you want a basic campfire version or something that people will recognize, this will work, especially if you're humming, singing, or whistling, or whatever, right? The thing that I'm showing here is each chord is played for two counts, exactly. Now, that's not exactly how Tracy Chapman does it. I'll get to that later. But again, the simplest way to do it is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And right, this is a great way to get started with things. And I recommend just being able to go through these chords in this order and repeat them, repeat them, stay in the groove, and you can sort of uh, get into the song in that way, right? Now, the next step, if you really want to start to get into the character of the song, is the rhythm, bringing in that catchy rhythm here, right? And what we're going to have are what are called pushed chord changes. So even if we keep those same simple chord shapes, right, the, G, the C, the G, the E minor, and the D, what you're going to notice here is that the G and the D are pushed. And all that means, it's a fancy word to mean they're happening a little bit, in this case, earlier than we expect, right? Our ear kind of expects them to happen on the strong beat, which in this song is the one and the three, right? So, a one and two and three, that's what I have up here, right? A one and two and three and four and one and two and three. But if we do the same chords, but for the G and the D, we do them an eighth note early. Listen to the, the effect that that brings into the song, right? Now, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... And this is a big deal. Um, and if you listen to the Tracy Chapman recording in this or Luke Combs or any of the covers from any of the folks who play it, you're going to hear this. And one thing that I really recommend doing even if you don't have your guitar in hand, is when the song is on, you can do this counting while you're listening, and it's a way of sort of like hearing, listening, counting, and getting that experience. So check this out, right? If I go to these examples, on the left, we have this where everything is on the strong beat, right? It's kind of what I did earlier, right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and I'm putting my body into it. Very awkward, but I want you to feel the the, the sort of feel the rhythm, right? One and two and three and four and you get the idea. Now let's look at this other version over here. This is how fast car is played, right? And again, you could practice this without a guitar, right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, that time I did the D late. But you get the idea there. I just want to make sure that's clear to you all that that's what's happening. So again, if you want, next time you hear the song, try counting along like that and putting your body into it when you're counting, you know, the oh, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and I find that that's actually going to make it easier to truly feel and internalize the rhythm. Don't sit like a statue and be like one and two and three and four and one and two and even if you're using volume to designate when the chord changes are happening, it really helps to 
be physical about it. Music, playing music especially, is a physical thing, right? One and two and three and four and one and da 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 I got a fast car. Okay? Now everything we do from here on is gonna have this rhythm. So I wanna introduce that here and make sure that that's clear to you, okay? Okay, next I wanna talk about bringing some melody into those chords to match what you hear in the fast car recording by, again, by Tracy Chapman, Luke Combs, or whoever here. Now, right? Uh, I'm gonna cite Michael Palmisano. He's a guitar teacher over at Guitar Gate. He does, uh, he makes a great point that, you know, a well-written song will have a hook or something that even a non-musician can recall and sing or hum or whistle. And that's when you know you have something powerful, right? Because what he's really getting at is 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 the singable line, the stuff that non-musicians totally just get, even if they don't play an instrument, because it sounds familiar. It sounds like a voice. It's got that vocal quality. That's why so many people adore Clapton's guitar playing, even that they don't play guitar, because it still sounds like something they can relate to. It doesn't sound like this crafted piece. It sounds like a human expressing themselves. And that's what you have with Fast Car. If you asked a friend to hum the Fast Car melody and that friend didn't play music, they might be like, oh yeah, Fast Car. It's repeated over and over and over again. Here is a simple way to do it. We're not gonna get into any of the fancy stuff yet. What we're gonna do is use um, a couple of new voicings. For the E minor, instead of doing our regular E minor like this, we're gonna do the thinnest four strings only, right? Second, open, open, third. Okay, so my middle finger is second fret of the fourth string, and then my pinky is on the thinnest string, third fret. And we have our regular D, but if you look at those highlighted notes, what those represent are the melody notes, right? And this is a simplified version of the melody. It's sort of broad strokes, right? But bum, 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 bum. Okay, for the G, what I'm doing here is I'm using my pinky on this third fret of the second string, okay? That means I have to use my ring finger down here. Right? But in, uh, for the C, also note that I'm not playing the thinnest string. The whole important part here is that the melody note, the highlighted note, we want that to be the highest note in pitch that we're playing, right? So this is our C, we're only playing the middle four strings. For the G, we skip the thinnest string as well. That ensures that this note and this note are gonna ring out, right? And we go to that E minor and the D. Right? And you do that, and you get that four-note melody. Bum, 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 bum. You can imagine like violins or background choral singers, sort of, those might be the notes they sing, right? Now there's one thing missing uh, from the actual fast car melody. I do have the finger positions noted here in my, uh, in my PDF if you're interested in those. But let me show you this. This is where it really hits the road, right? Look at that C. We're going to start off with that C without the second uh, string fretted, right? We're going to sort of do the thinnest four strings, add that first fret note on the second string, go back to the open second string, and then go to the G that we already did in the previous graphic. And we go to the E minor from the previous graphic. So if this is like really making you fall down and stumble, simplify it and just play this first, right? You want to keep things simple when you're learning them, right? So you do this a few times, you get it under your belt, and then for that C, you can bring in the... I'm adding some filler strums there. You don't need to do that, right? That might be a difficult change for you, going from that C Whoops. You want to practice that transition by itself if you need to, from that C to the G, right? Kind of a fast transition there. But this is basically the same exact notes that you hear in Tracy Chapman's version. She's going to play it a little bit different, right? I'm going to get to that later, but it's the same notes. Okay, so that's why I'm calling that out there, okay? So uh, practice this. This is something you could have tons of fun with, whether you're strumming or finger picking, which I'll talk about in a minute. 
Okay, so if that's something you want to hang out and play with, you can, right? But let's keep on going here because I want to show you how we can sort of go up the neck and play this like Tracy Chapman does using this cool voicing of the E minor and the D, okay? So the C and the G stay the same here. I'm still strumming. I'll get to finger picking in a little bit. Okay, now here's the deal. See how your pinky is right here for that G? We're gonna keep that on the, th on the second string, but we're gonna sort of slide it up. You don't have to like, you don't have to keep it pressed down, but I would keep it touching the string because it gives you a sort of sensory anchor, right? Okay, eighth fret is your target fret for that pinky. And then you're gonna bring your index finger here on the seventh fret of the fifth string. Okay, now if you're picking this, what you wanna do is basically pluck the middle four strings. So seven, muted, open, eighth. Okay, when I say muted, what that means is that this index finger, it's touching the seventh fret, right? That's the note it's playing. But then just, if you lean that into the next string, you're muting the string. It's actually one of those things that's actually uh, very, very convenient for this chord because you're, you're kind of leaning your hand anyway, right? So we do our C, then our G, seven muted open eight. Okay, that's our E minor. And then for our D minor, all this is is the same shape, just move down two frets, but you're gonna wanna keep your pinky on the seventh fret. So it's a two fret difference between our index and our pinky here. So five muted open seven. Okay, if this is hard for you, just practice those two chords by themselves. Okay, you don't need to rush it. You don't need to do the whole progression yet. You don't need to worry about timing yet. Just get used to the chord shapes, right? Do that a bunch, okay? Now there's something you might notice about this D. You might be like, oh, does that sound right? It sounds kind of funky. Here is what is going on here, okay? The normal D, has all the notes in the D major triad, right? Our D, our A, our D, and our F sharp, right? Those are the three notes that make up a D major. Now, there's tons of ways to play a D chord. It's all gonna have combinations of those three notes. Sometimes you have multiple notes, which is fine. It just makes the chord a little bit bigger. Now, this Tracy Chapman voicing right here, it's a D on this bass note. This note is an F sharp, right? Just like this. Notice how those are the same pitches, right? The open fourth string and second fret on the finished string are the same technical tones as fifth fret on fifth string and seventh fret on second string. Right, but when we add this open third string, it sounds what's called dissonant, right? Meaning those two notes are clashing horribly. And that's re the reason why is they're uh, a half step away in pitch. But in this case, it kind of works because the overall progression of this song kind of is one of longing, or the vibe of this song is a bit of, of, of longing and, and um, I don't want to say desperation, but you know, looking like Luke looking at the suns on Tatooine, like it's, it's uh, wanting to get away from where you are, just from my cursory understanding of the lyrics and stuff. And when you end with a chord like that, right? Whoops. Right, we have stability in those first two chords. And then up here, this is where we're sort of looking to the horizon. And here, things are not quite right. There's like an instability. But then that instability goes away when we go back to the C and then eventually to the G. The G is our sort of home base here, right? So um, with, I think, musically and lyrically, that chord just works. Now, if that chord is giving you uh, fits for whatever reason, try this instead. Same E minor, but for the D, just do, so fourth string open, seventh fret, seventh fret, okay? This does not have that little clash, right? And the reason why is this is a D, a D, and an F sharp, right? It's our root and our major third. Um, now you lose out on the tension, which depending on the vibe you're going for may be good or bad. I think Tracy Chapman's version, the more you listen to it, I think that tension is really a signature part of the song's vibe, okay? So it's up to you, but if you really wanna play this song and you want an easy version, you can do this simplified D, okay? I just wanna call that out there because um, it is something you can do. Okay, so uh, let's keep on moving ahead here. Next up is the finger style. Okay, now the finger style. We're gonna play it. This is how I, I believe Chasey Chapman plays it. Here's how I would recommend doing it. It's these three fingers. Okay, your right thumb, 
or you're picking hand thumb. If you're left-handed, it's your thumb, index, and middle finger. Those are gonna be the, the, the fingers you're gonna use. Now, the main idea is your thumb is gonna do the bass note of whatever chord you're on. So it's either on the fifth or the sixth string. And then it's your index and your middle finger on, um, on uh, the third and second string, respectively. Okay, so the C, the G, the E minor, the D. Now this might be easier for you, it might be harder for you. It depends where you are with finger picking. Um, but when you look at these tabs, don't be scared of them. All it is is the same tabs as here. You know, well, not the simplified version. It's the same as this. We're just getting rid of that fourth string, that D string. We're not playing that at all anymore. So you don't have to worry about the muting with the C. You don't have to fret the fourth string note. With a G, you don't have to fret the fifth string note. Um, okay, so it, it's it's one of those things where, again, depending on where you're at, it could be easier or harder for you. But just practice these chords. That's the next bit of advice I have here. So the C, the G, the E minor, the D. Yeah, you get that tension there, right? I got a fast car. La da 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 da. Bum, ba, da, dum, bum, bum, ba, da, da, dum. All right, so let's move on in and add the additional step, which is going to give the, the vibe of, of Tracy Chapman's version. And it's these two notes right here, right? The third fret um, and to the open, basically. All I'm doing there, those highlighted notes, those are little filler grace notes I'm adding, right? They're sort of after the main part of each phrase play it nice and light then you go up to the E minor to the D and the cool part about this is look for the G my hand is already where it needs to be this doesn't have to move it's all with your picking hand right keep your keep your G there and just pluck second and third string then do the E minor to the D and then pluck second and third string because again that seven and that open are in this D minor shape so you basically are taking notes from the chords you're already fretting and just lightly playing them, okay? So, okay, so on the screen now you have where we started with that C, right? One, da, 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 e minor and two D on the B and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and... And then here is where we're ending up. So that is all you need to get started with this riff. Now, I'm sure there's tons of little fills, and I think Tracy Chapman does a... She might do things like that or something. I'm not worried about that right now. I want to get you up and running with this and show you how you can start with something super simple, just those four chords, and then you can sort of progress things to that place where you're doing the finger style if you want using these chord voicings if you want. You could just be liberal though and, and and freely pick however you want. You don't need to necessarily follow my exact tab. I would follow the chords though and the rhythm. That's the important part is you want that push chord changes, right? But again, feel free to use that easier E minor and D, and they might be easier for you. It all depends, right? Your mileage may vary. I just want to give you options here and show you how you can take a riff that is iconic, like this fast car riff, break it down to its essence, which is just four chords. And then so step by step, okay, we're going to use push chord changes, and then we're going to sort of add the melody and the E minor to the D, right? It sort of gives this... So much fun you can have with this one. So that's going to be it for this one, y'all. I want you to have a great weekend uh, if you're watching this on Friday, like the, the day I'm recording and posting this. And um, if you want to see a lesson for Fast Car, let me know. Uh, email me or just comment below. Emailing is the best way because I'm going to see that. Uh, and I like to make lessons for the songs that are the most requested. So if you want a full lesson with the lyrics and chords and a, a licensed song sheet and everything, I can make that for you. Uh, the more of you email, the sooner that'll happen, okay? But otherwise, if you wanna get um, my notes for this, if you wanna get some audio clips of some of these uh, different sequences I play through, just like repeating audio things that you can listen to, 
head on over to my website, songnotes.net. That's my site. You'll find those on the lesson page there. And um, it's a great way to sort of learn this and have fun with it. This is such a good song and such an iconic riff, and it's been a pleasure to uh, teach it for you here. So I'm going to leave you all, and I'll see you in the next video. But until then, uh, my friends, take care. I'll see you. Bye-bye.